Hello and welcome to Talk Time. My guest today is singer and songwriter Hita Yaluru, who is from California in the United States, a teen sensation of Indian descent who wants to give youth a voice through her music, many of which have already hit the chart busters. Hita, welcome to Talk Time. Thank you for having me. Pleasure is all mine. My question to you is, a lot of people know you in the United States and different parts of the world. You are quite a sensation. You are a singer and songwriter. Uh, and you have started music at an early age. Now, before I go into all of that, what brings you to India? I understand you are already on a multi-city tour. You have toured cities like Bangalore and all that. You're going to perform in Meghalaya, Shillong, and Nongpu. What brings you to India? Again. <laughs> um... I come here again because the people and the culture just keep drawing me back. Um, my family originates from here and I honestly just love how welcoming it is and how every city you go yeah. to, there's an entire new style, new foods, new culture to experience. So I'm really excited about this trip. Mm -hmm. So you are associated with Atma Nirbhar Bharat, that is self-reliant India. So can you tell my viewers your association with this campaign? I am traveling with Mr. Ike G to empower females, empower children, and remind them that they hold so much power, they have, they have so much capabilities in this world, and just to remind them that like, if they work hard, if they remember their passions, if they remember their goals, they can do anything they want. Right. Uh, empowerment seems to come again and again in some of your things, themes, you know, when you write your songs. And I remember if it is a single or an album, I, I really am not sure. Uh, one of your themes when, where you wrote was, the title says, We Are Who We Are. And you, you give a lot of importance to, uh, you know, to reflect one's own identity. Uh, you know, uh, that you're saying that when there is trouble, you have to look into yourself and only the person, the, uh, he or she can only solve one's problems. So why are these issues recurring in your songs, in your lyrics again and again? They're recurring in my words because they're recurring in the world. All of, like, everywhere, in America, here, all over the world you see issues because of people's skin color, who they love, who they are, where they belong in society. It's, I feel like it takes away from who they actually are as people. I mean, we are all humans. We all experience emotions. We all cry. We all love. And we are who we are. Yeah. So why should we be segregated because of it? Absolutely. At the end of the day, uh, Hitha, your identity is that of a musician. And I understand you started at the age of four. Yeah. And your first guru was your grandmother. Uh, tell us something about that. My grandmother is one of my biggest influencers. Well, she passed away, but okay. she will always be in my heart because she was a powerful woman. She was a principal of a school, and she really knew what she wanted in the world. And um, From the youngest age, I can remember her telling me details about life, giving me advice, and she's the one who joined me into singing. I don't know how she knew, but she just knew. I was born to sing mm -hmm. and she knew my sister was born to dance mm -hmm. she just knew it she felt it in her heart and mm -hmm. I just aspire to be like her because she was so confident and well-spoken and yeah yeah no no being being somebody uh, with strong India roots being someone who is of an Indian descent uh, the question is, does it help? Because you started with Indian classical music, and then today you play uh, several instruments. You are at the time trying to master, or you've already mastered the piano, uh, and so on and so forth. But what is the link between Indian classical music and, uh, and uh, other genres in the West, because you are located in the US? Um, being Indian is a big part of my identity. I take pride in coming from this wonderful nation. Um, but, you know, just singing Indian classical music to start off, it's, teach, it's taught me so much, you know, just based on like ragas and all of that. You can, it's like the world splits things up, but you don't realize how connected they are. Singing here is actually quite similar to singing in America. You have to do the same thing either yeah. way. Just the words you're singing are different, but 
you know, they all like feed off of each other. But but do you get a sense that we we we, we always say that music has no barriers? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, in whatever language you sing, it's it's uh, the ability to communicate. The people uh, usually can at least identify. Mm-hmm. Now you take a lot of care uh, to say uh, to when you write your songs. Uh, you take care to make sure that people can relate to what you're talking about. That's very important. Yeah. Isn't it? So give some examples of that. Okay, well, um, actually, We Are Who We Are is, <laughs> it's a song. It hasn't been released yet, but I'll tell you the backstory yeah. of that because a lot of people can relate to the backstory. I wrote that song when the Black Lives Movement matter movement was happening in America where yeah. people were being killed just because of their skin color and it stuck it struck me deep because again we're separated because something so unimportant as our skin tone even here and there all over the world and I wrote this song when um, I was in my mom's bedroom mm-hmm. and I was feeling down I was feeling bad and she was like Hitha I know you're not feeling the best right now, but you are who you are. You were born this, this way to do something. We are who we are. There's nothing you can do to change that. Nothing. So you have to grow where you've been planted. and You have to accept that and face it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're all born with our own special gifts, mm-hmm. our own uniqueness. Yeah. And she told me, what's the point in trying to be someone else when that somebody's already taken, why do you want to do something? Do you have a personal experience? Uh, you know, uh, one of your singles was titled Independent. Huh. Uh, you know, so there is, seems to be when one listens to it or when one reads the lyrics, yeah. one gets an impression that there is a story behind that. Yes, there is a story. Uh, that you have faced that. something, uh, a bad patch or something rough times, mm-hmm. which made you to write that song. Definitely. Actually, my first few songs, um, before I get into the story, my first few songs have been based on something that has impacted me. So, independent. I was bullied by people who I considered my bestest friends from a young age. Right when I moved into the city I live in now, um, I made a couple friends immediately. We immediately bonded, and I loved them very much. Um, but when I wrote this song, I was cyberbullied, and I was told to, you know, kill myself and all of these terrible mm-hmm. things. And I was a young, I was young. Mm-hmm. I was 12, 13 years old, and no one should have to face situations like that. And instead of taking it out on them, because I actually did understand where their emotions and rage was, were coming from. I understood their point of view. Mm-hmm. So instead of taking it out on them, because they had suffered as well as I did, I wrote it down in a journal and converted it into a song and yeah. just sang it. Absolutely. Now, now, Hita, one thing, you say that you want to give youth a voice mm. uh, through your music and you want to connect with your peers. What are some of the issues you think uh, a troubled youth today in the world. Yeah. Um, don't talk about just India or the US. I'm just asking a generic question. What, in your view, are some of the youths uh, that uh, some some of the issues? Sorry, that trouble the youths today. Okay, I'll start off with this. Wherever I go, people say you're only 16. You're so yeah. mature. How are you talking like this on world issues? And I don't know how to reply because I'm not extremely mature for my generation, actually. There are so many kids who are so much smarter, so mature and capable, but they're just pushed aside. They're young, they can't do anything. That's what people think. I say give youth a voice because they're ignored right now, currently. People forget how much power the youth has because we are the future of the world. And so instead of pushing them away, thinking that they're not important, we should be giving them opportunities, making them feel loved so that when they come into the workforce, when they take over the world, they should feel like we need to make a world a better place instead of taking out their neglection on the world. Absolutely. On that note, I'll go for a short break now. Don't go away. I'll be right back. I'm in conversation with Hita Yonderu, a singing sensation from the United States, currently on a tour of India.
Welcome back. I'm in conversation with singer and songwriter Hitha Yaluru. Uh, Hitha, you know, uh, one significant aspect of, of what you do, apart from your songs, songwritings, you also write about your experiences in different magazines and journals. Yeah. Uh, so how do you regard yourself? Singer first, songwriter, you are also a commentator and journalist. Uh, what do you want to be? Uh, you want to become a professional singer, of <laughs> course. What's that? Uh, too many, your plate is full. Yeah, but like, I love it. I regard myself as an artist. You know, music artist, writer, they're all forms of art and I partake in all of them because they're all connected. I sing because I love to sing, but I write because I love putting my thoughts on paper. I actually started writing songs after I started writing journal entries. So I can be anything I want. See, that's the thing. I have accepted that. I've realized it. So that's how I know that, that's how I know my potential. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give that chance to so many other people here. So do you, apart from I mean, music, uh, when, when, when a young musician, uh, generally, you know, young musician follows or gets inspired by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And you say somewhere that uh, uh, among those who inspired you or inspires you, uh, or the great Ms. Subalakshmi and of course Taylor Swift. These are some of the names that you have taken. Huh. I'd read somewhere. Uh, so where do you draw your inspiration? Uh, do you listen to people and try to give your own identity? Do you draw from your surroundings? What do you do? Well, that changes every time. <laughs> I get inspired by actually everything. Plants, nature, people, music, art, everything, because there's so much to take from the simplest things. Mm -hmm. um, but my big part of who I am today, big part of how I can speak the way I do, is from my parents, because... Tell us something about your parents yeah. as well. My mom and my dad are the most loving people in the world, and I am blessed, blessed to have them as my parents. Um, uh, every time we used to drive to the music studio, which was about an hour away from where I lived, twice a week my dad would go through that for me. And we would drive there every single week, mm -hmm. twice. And on the way there and on the way back, um, we would talk about politics or mm -hmm. my day yep. or school or education. It's a big part of how I am mature enough to talk about world issues because my dad would discuss them with me, argue about them with me. So I love arguing. <laughs> you love arguing. I love arguing. Okay. <laughs> At the end of the day, that is, you, are you opinionated? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely, opinionated. Yeah, opinionated. <laughs> but uh, So without having opinions and views, I don't think anyone can express oneself, express or have a point of view. Being opinionated is actually not a bad thing, but a lot of regard their opinions and completely disregard everybody else's. What about, what about, since you were a singer, uh, what about Bollywood? Bollywood. Uh, you know, bo I mean, all around the world, Bollywood is something which people identify oh, yeah. India with. Yeah. And, but a lot of people say, a lot of people uh, don't like the word Bollywood in India. They said Indian music, Indian films is beyond Bollywood. Yeah. Uh, but w how do you look at Bollywood? I grew up watching Bollywood, but again, you can't, put something into something else. I mean, there are all kinds of cultures in India, right? All kinds of music. So defining it by one term, I think, takes away from its value a little bit. But again, there's like classical music, and then there's like Bollywood, Hindi music, and then there's other languages. So, I mean, I grew up watching these things. Every single time a new yeah. Indian movie would come out, I would mm -hmm. go straight to the theater, watch it with my dad, come back and talk about it for hours and mm -hmm. hours, but yeah. So now, now the issue is, you know, uh, Unite for Good Foundation. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's an on-government organization. Uh, that is also uh, basically involved in your current India visit. Mm -hmm. And we understand that uh, you're also trying to promote, apart from trying to, you know, connect with youths and trying to talk about empowerment and so on, you are also trying to promote Indian handlooms, particularly handlooms in Northeast India. Wearing and, it right now. Yeah, you are wearing. And Northeast India, as you know, is a diverse 
place of 45 million people, eight states, 400 ethnic communities yeah. and sub communities. And it's, we are known for our weaves, you know, the handlooms, exactly, yeah. uh, absolutely organic mm -hmm. uh, stuff. So how, how do you plan to promote handlooms from Northeast India? Believe it or not, that's actually part of women empowerment because the people who are creating all these beautiful works of art are the people, are women who are spending so much time doing all of this and making sure it's beautiful so that somebody can take it and value it and cherish it. I actually visited um, this place yesterday where a couple of women um, were creating baskets from hyacinth. And I was like, hyacinth? And they were like, yeah. Water hyacinth. Water hyacinth. Yeah. And I was just like, that's so shocking because this wheat polluted lakes and waters, but they took it and created some beautiful art mm. from it. I was, I was like, mm. how do you do uh, that? Do you plan to tell these stories back home in the United oh, States? Oh, of course, yeah, because it's a big part of like this journey. I mean, noticing all of these people working every single day to do something good for the environment as well as promoting their own culture, I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, that's very interesting in the sense that, you know, you said that you are also involved in this Atmanirbhar Bharat, mm. the self-reliant India. Yeah. Uh, now, we are a country of 100 and, uh, you know, uh, 30 million, uh, 1.3 billion people now and counting. Mm. Uh, now, <laughs> now, the point is, uh, you know, uh, there are two sides of India, mm. you know, yeah. one is a country which is, uh, you know, sending uh, space missions and so on and so forth, high-tech stuff. Uh, if you talk about the Silicon Valley, if you will, you'll find thousands and thousands of people are Indians. And if you look at the, the, the big uh, tech companies in the United States, almost every, yeah. every company is headed by an Indian. My dad uh, created his own company. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So now, now what is the moral of the story? Uh, you are of Indian descent. What does this reflect about India? In your view? A lot of people, I've come here, a lot of people, their mission here is to finish college and then, or not even finish studies here and then go to America. And I'm like, why do you want to go to America? This is such a beautiful country. They're like, opportunity. I think about it. I'm like, sure, there's opportunity in America, but there's opportun more opportunity here to, because this country is beautiful and it can improve like everything else in the world. What do you think, uh, looking back, suppose you'd have been in India, mm -hmm. uh, do you think you'd have got the opportunity to excel in the world of music? You'd have got the same publicity that you are getting, uh, people are knowing you and it will be a matter of time, perhaps. Uh, we hope so, we want you to be a household name sooner <laughs> than later. Uh, but my question is simple. Do you think uh, if you compare and contrast, you said you come to India a lot. Uh, even now, presently, you are touring different parts of the country. You know, my question is, do you think you would have got the same opportunity had you not been in the U.S.? Maybe not pop singing, but I think I would have still sung. I mean, I, I come here more. I come here to perform um, much more than I actually perform there. I mean, right now it's because of COVID, but... Um, it's just, I relate more to the people here. Actually, in America, I live in a hub of, it's like in American India, because everybody I live around are Indian as well. Yeah. So I actually feel much more at home here than a lot of places in America. So I think I would have still sung, and I would have actually might have grown bigger because I would be able to travel this country more and perform more and talk to people uh, more. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not a, not where you live, but how you chart your career. Yeah. Uh, yes. That is important. On that note, to go for another short break, I'm in conversation with Hita, a teen sensation from the United States, California. Don't go away. I'll be right back. <music> Welcome back. I'm still in conversation with Hita. Uh, Hita, you know, you say somewhere that your success mantra is indeed quite simple. Convert lifetime hardships and experiences into uplifting songs that are relatable 
and can inspire others. Now, what will happen? I mean, are you going to are you going to focus on just personal experiences, or do you think uh, you will go into the because see, there is commerce involved as far as music is concerned. Music for a cause is one aspect, and music for commercial success is the other side of the story. There are two sides. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I think nobody can be a social worker or social service uh, throughout one's career. You know, what do you want to do? At the end of the day, what is your mantra for uh, to get into the humdrum of commercial entertainment industry? Actually, I am entering it. Because you did, you did say that there are on two sides of yeah. the scale, but I actually think they're much more related nowadays. Maybe not in the fu pa in the past, mm -hmm. but in the future, I think they're going to get closer and closer because so many people sing their hearts. You know, um, again, I focus on issues that I think yeah. need to be addressed in the world, and that's because people can relate to it. People listen to my songs and they feel better about themselves. They become happy again. I actually, one time, from the first song I made, Standing Up With Pride, this is actually one of the biggest reasons I actually continue to sing. I was going through YouTube and I saw a comment and it was about a handicapped girl who had ADHD. And she said, I listened to your song and it completely changed my life. And I was like, how did it change your life? I'm just the 13 year old kid yeah. not, do, not knowing what she's doing. And I changed your life. And that's when I realized how much power I hold. Um, not power as in how huh, I take over the world, but power as in at least make one life better. No, you have the whole entire power yourself because you are, you are a kid of a generation where the technology is right in your fingertips. Yeah. Uh, you don't need a uh, conventional media to get across your song. Uh, you can control uh, yourself. You yeah. can put it up yourself. You don't bother about. You don't have to bother about anybody yeah. doing you any favor yeah. uh, by putting it out on television or anywhere. You, you have the controls. Do you think that has been a huge advantage for you? Yeah, of course. I mean, social media has a way of connecting you with people who think like you, who understand you. Um, so, of course, when I post it on social media, post my songs. The people who come back and watch my songs yeah. are the people who relate to it. And I think that's a great thing because the entire world can relate to my songs. I will, I will play, during this interview, I will play some of your songs as well. When you see the final product, you will also see some of your videos out along with this conversation, which we are going to put it into the middle. But uh, what is your most favorite uh, song so far of yours? Oh my gosh. Uh, I want you to sing at least two lines for the viewers and then we'll continue with your video. Do that. Okay. Just sing two lines. Um <laughs> I will never let you leave me, never let me go. We'll get through the surface, we'll get through the storms. Waiting for you to come back. Hope that we will always last. Wish that you could see me now where I am. That is from one of my newest songs. Okay. It's called is we will last. We will last. Yes. We will last, of course. Now the point is, Hitha, you know, uh, what are some of the challenges you have faced? Because, you see, challenge itself has been the theme of your stories. Now, what are the challenges you have faced as someone from the present generation? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say uh, you didn't have to struggle like many people did. Definitely. Uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, you belong to a privileged kind of a class, uh, unlike many uh, struggling artists around the world. Uh, so you consider yourself privileged? I but, do. Consider but still, what have been some of your challenges? I consider myself very privileged, and I feel no shame for saying that because that's the truth of my situation. I am blessed. I have wonderful parents. I live in a good house. I have a supportive sister. And I am privileged, that is true, but it does not make me blind to the hardships that people face. Right. Because both my parents fought their way to where they are now. You know, the people all around me, even though they have money, they might be suffering with mental health, their racial profiling. They're, I'm privileged, but I see the 
I see the unprivileged people. I see the hardships that other people go through. And I go through a couple hardships too. That doesn't make them more important or less important than other people. So I just, you know, it makes me so sad sometimes to think that mm -hmm. people are separated because of their privilege or where they are in the world. And I, my hardships have been undermined before because, oh, you are a kid from America mm -hmm. and you have everything. And I'm like, I do have everything, but like feeling accepted in America because I'm Indian, that's hard. Understanding my own identity, that's hard because mixed cultures, you know? And so I think just like 